more and more, God. We want to seek you more and more. As we worship this morning, O oh Lord God, let your spirit move for each and every one, O oh God. Let your overflowing, overwhelming, O oh Lord God. Lord, we ask for your forgiveness, O oh God. We ask for forgiveness, O oh God, for what we have caused, for what we have done, O oh God. In spite of all these things in this world that we are so busy, O oh God, we forget, O oh God, to pray. We forget to worship you, O oh Lord God. We forget to ask forgiveness for what we have caused, O oh God, for what we have done, O oh Lord God. Lord, we desire to worship you, O God. We desire, God, to live in you, O Lord God. Lord, right now, fill us with your blood, O God. Fill us with your word, O God. And we thank you for everything, O God, that you have given us, that you strengthens us, O God, day by day, O God. We worship you, O God. We praise you, Jesus, O Lord God. Yes, O Jesus, we worship you, O God. The Lord has wanted to tell us, He's asking us a time for you to worship, a time to pray, O God. God is reminding us right now that we have offered ourselves fully heartedly. God wanted us to be rooted daily, that we worship every day we go to our works, every day we go to our places. Every day we go wake up in the morning. Just a simple words just to say to God, Lord, good morning, Lord. Good morning, Lord. So right now, we, we will sing this song all together. We will lift our hands. Forget all these things. Forget all what trials, problems that are, we are facing right now. Just leave it to God. Leave it to God. Spend hallelujah.
give you again. We thank you for the songs that you give to us. We thank you for everything, O Lord God. Truly that you will never leave us nor forsake us, O God. Lord, that we desire to live out your name, O God. We desire to worship you, O God. We thank you, O God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Sige po, sabihin po nga po natin sa mga katanap po natin I love you with the love of the Lord Yung malakas I love you with the love of the Lord I am glad that you are here I am glad that you are here ate Kalapitin mo, I am glad you are here Are you ready to praise the Lord? Once again, can we shout hello?
we exalt you, Lord, oh God. We worship you, Lord, God. We all our hearts, we all our gladness, oh God. Lord, we thank you for everything, oh God. That you always remind us, oh God. That you will always be there, oh God. Lord, right now, my Lord, oh God. We thank you for the words, oh God. Truly, oh God, you are most high, Lord oh God. You deserve the highest praise, oh God. You deserve all everything, my Lord, oh God. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. To meet the Lord. Amen. How many people came here to see the Lord? Amen. Did you see Him? Yes. Did you see Him? Yes. Because there are many here who come here, they think that where is the Lord? Right? But the Bible says when two or three gather in His name, He is in the midst of us. God is spirit and He can be only worship in spirit and in truth. Right? Amen. Right? Are you getting it? There are many here. They have a concept that we should have a statue here of God so that they know that God is here, right? God is actually is not more in any more in statue. God is alive. He is spirit and He is alive. Because when we worship God and when we don't participate in the worshiping the Lord, we are putting a question mark. Maybe we are doubting there is no God here. Are you with me? When we worship God and when you don't participate in worshiping God, when we don't lift your hands and worship God, when you don't proclaim from your mouth and give a glory to God, that means that you are having a doubt whether it be I have come in the church or I have come into the social club. Are you with me? Are you getting it? There are many here who have no idea about it that when we come here, this is the house of God. Because the Bible says wherever the people of God gathers, there is the presence of God. It does not matter the place. God does not is the respecter of the place. You know that? In the New Testament, God does not live in a temple that man has made. God does not live there. God lives in you and in me. Are you with me? And when we are listening, you, know, you have to just lift your hand and lift your mouth and lift your words to worship God. Are you with me? The last song we said, I exalt thee. Above all, I exalt God. That is our real purpose on the earth. To exalt our living God. Amen? Are you getting it? To exalt our living God. Are you with me? Let everybody stand and let's read the word of God. I want everybody to look to the screen and read loudly as much as loud you can. Did you have your breakfast, right? Yes. Right? Everybody has a breakfast. Everybody got it. Even if you're fasting, God is going to give you strength. Read. Godly men are growing a tree that bears life giving fruit, and all moving souls are wise. Read again. Godly men are growing a tree that bears life giving fruit, and all moving souls are wise. Just think about yourself that you are a tree today. And you are a tree that is growing. And you are a tree that she is bearing fruit. Are you bearing fruit? And Bible says, all who win souls are wise. When you win soul means, when you preach the proclaim the gospel to someone and someone comes to Christ, that is the wisest thing on this earth. Are you, know? are you getting it? Because for some, this is the foolish thing on the world. But in the eyes of God, this is the wisest thing. Because God says, all who win souls are wise. Let's pray together. 
Heavenly Father, we all come to you in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We acknowledge your presence in the midst of us, God. And thank you, Lord Jesus Christ, that you brought your people in this house to see you, to have a fellowship with you, and to have a fellowship with one another. We commit everybody into your hand, O oh Father God, and we pray, including me, Lord, cover us with your precious blood, hide us in your presence, open our understanding, open our heart, open our mind, so that we may understand and receive your word, Lord. And we pray also, Lord Jesus, that not only we receive your word that will be planted upon our life but we pray give us the courage give us the boldness that we may obey the word of God because obedience will bring blessing in our life Lord and thank you Lord Jesus Christ for each and everyone here we pray we commit ourselves into your hand for the time we give it to you lead us by your spirit in Jesus name we all pray and everybody says Amen, Amen. sit down I will start this message or I will start this sermon asking you one question do you have any fruit just in this church are you sitting here did you bring anybody to the Lord did you preach gospel anybody who's sitting in this room you are the one who preached the gospel to them and they received the Jesus Christ because you preached the gospel to them and because they received Jesus Christ they're glorifying God and they came to the church anybody here just look around look to your neighbor is that your fruit that you have brought to God are you with me are you with me I'm asking a simple question are you, this is the one who, next person that's sitting next to you that you brought to the church, you came together to the church. Are you the one who God used as an instrument to that you are the one who bear the fruit? You are the one who proclaimed Jesus Christ in their life. Are you the one? Be honest. Be honest. Right? This is a very hard question. Because I believe on the day of judgment, when Jesus is going to sit on the throne of judgment, He's not going to ask you how many church you started, how many worship songs you sing, how many people you brought in transport, how many hours you prayed, how many hours you did. But God is going to judge us by our fruit. Are you using your life after you receive Jesus Christ the Lord and Savior of your life? Did you understand that you are saved by God, that you are saved for a purpose of God? Do you understand that? Do you have realized that? Any time in the point of your life that God has saved you because He loves you. Not only He saved you that you will just sit in the home and just and go to the work and be happy. That's fine. That God is always loving. But God has saved us for a purpose. And our purpose is to tell others the loving grace of God and tell others that Jesus is the Lord and Jesus is the Savior. There is no other thing on the earth can save you from eternal destruction. It is only Jesus who saves us from the eternal destruction. Do you understand? Are you getting it? Right? We are living a life we go Friday to Friday, we come to church, we are happy because we love God, we love one another, we love people and that is the good sign in our life. But the point is here, let's not be deceived here because sometimes we can be deceived here by Satan because Satan is so happy that you go to church, he is happy. You read the word of God, he is happy. You sit at home and pray, he is happy. But the moment you start moving out from your comfort zone and start sharing love of God to someone else and someone else who in the, is in the captivity of sin, when you start to share the love of God, then he's not happy. You know that? He's not happy because you are entering his territory now and you're destroying his territory because you are free from the, from the what do you call the wages of the sin. You're free from the wrath of God and that's why you're so happy that you want someone else also to understand that, right? And that's why Satan does not get happy. That's why there are many people in the world when they preach gospel to the other people in another country, they are persecuted. Why they are persecuted? Because Satan does not like that people of God will go and bear fruit. 
And this is what he is doing in our life. He is engaging us in a such a way, he keeping us so much occupied, he keeping us so much busy with the life that we call life, that we have called life and we are living in that life. He keeps us so occupied that we always forgot that we are being saved by God to bear fruit. That's why King Solomon was writing. He says, godly men are growing tree. Are we godly? Do we have, we possess the character of godliness? If we are godly, what happens? We are a tree that bears life-giving fruit. Life-giving fruit. What is the life-giving fruit that you and I can give? The life that we have in Jesus Christ, we can also offer those who have never received Jesus Christ. Are you excited? That God is calling us for a purpose? Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? Are you excited? Because what happened, David has so much preoccupied the church in the 21st century that he has kept the people in the occupation, what we call the world, and we are so busy in the world that we forgot, sometimes we forget our real purpose that we are here. Amen? 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 Amen. So, Bible says, all who win souls are? So we are in a business of God's business to bring souls into the harm, in the, into the kingdom of God. I repeat it. Not in the church, but into the kingdom of God. Are you with me? Now, let's go. What is the reason that we are not able to do that? The reason for not winning soul is lack of burden. You know, lack of burden. We don't have that burden. We have never realized that how we are being saved. We never realized from, from what we have been saved. We have never realized that one. You know what we are never realized? God actually saved us from the eternal destruction. Do you know that there is a hell? Do you know that there is a real hell? Yes. How many people know there is a hell? Yes. And there is a heaven? Yes. How many people know there is a hell? Again, how many people know that there is a real hell? Amen. Can I see your hands going up? Everybody believes that there is a hell, right? Right? There is a hell. Now what is God saved you from what? From that hell? Distraction. Because hell is the place where you are not going to die. You are going to be tortured the whole of your life. There is no what we call permanent death for the soul. You might physically die, but permanently your soul will live. Either it will live in heaven forever, either it will live and be tortured in the hell forever. And that's what will happen. When we don't have that burden, if you don't understand that what it is, burden. Burden is a very simple word. You know what's burden? When I see, if I have a family member, when I see my family members are not saved, I see that they are doing wrong, I see that they are not even coming to the church, I can see that they don't pray, I see that their lifestyle is different. What happened? You create, God creates a burden in your heart. What is the burden? How I will be able to reach them out and how I will be able to tell them about God and how I will be able to tell them that the lifestyle that they are living is wrong and that will take them to hell. What happened? When you have that understanding, the burden will come in your heart. Are you with me? The burden will come in your heart. We are not the person that we can see that our family members are going in destruction. We cannot allow that. If you are allowing that to your family members to be, go in destruction, means you have never understood the salvation in your life. Are you with me? Church, are you getting it? The lack of burden. The Bible says here in the book of Romans chapter 1 verse 3, this is what he says. This is Paul is writing to the book of Romans. To the Romans he says, O Israel, my people, O my Jewish brothers, how long for you, to, how I long for you to come to Christ. See the burden he has for the Jewish people. Why? Paul was a Jew. And he knew the salvation will come from Jew. And the first person, the first race in the world, the first tribe that will receive salvation, the first nation that will receive salvation is Israel, but it was not happening. And he said, how I long for you to come to Christ. 
See the burden that he has, that he wants the Jew people, his own brothers, his own race people, his own tribe people, he wants to see them, they will come to Christ. Are you getting it? See the burden that Paul had it. And what happened? My heart is heavy within me and I grieve bitterly day and night. Are you having that burden? Church, it's a pin drop silence. You know what's pin drop silence? Nobody even breathing here. Okay, let's see. I grieve bitterly day and night because of you Christ knows and the Holy Spirit knows that it is no mere pretense when I say that I would be willing to be forever damned if that would save you. He was ready to be used. He was ready to be destroyed. He said, if I'm going to be damned, I'm going to be anything. But I will see that these people will come to the saving grace of God. Same thing applies in our family, our friends, our colleagues, our relatives, our people that we are connected in the world. Are you really having that burden? Are you having that burden? Because lack of burden will not give you any heaviness. It will not give you any kind of thing. Because if you have a burden, what will happen? You will start to pray. You will start to pray. Are you with me? You will start to pray. You will not condemn your people who are doing wrong because they are doing wrong because they don't understand the right. That's why they are doing wrong. But what happened? When you start to pray, what will happen? The Lord will turn your burden into joy. Not reason number one for not feeling so least, lack of. Are you getting it? The second thing is the lack of the fear of God. Many people say, I fear God, I fear God, I fear God. But I'm telling you, if you fear God, you will do right what is right in the eyes of God. Are you with me? Are you with me? If you have a fear of God, and if you're a real genuine Christian, and really born again, what will happen? That fear will help you to know God more. Because the Bible says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and understanding. Here it says in 2 Corinthians 5.11, he says, it is because of this solemn fear of the Lord. Again, Paul is writing, he says, it is because of the solemn fear of the Lord which is ever present in our See, Paul says, the fear of the Lord is always present in his mind. Is the fear of the Lord is present in our mind? Are you with me? Are you getting it? When the fear of the Lord is always present in our mind, I will give you full guarantee you will not do wrongs in your life. And he says here, it is because of the solemn fear of the Lord which is ever present in our mind that we work so hard. Here read, read again what he says. That we work so hard to win. Yes. We work so hard. When there is a way we need to go out of our comfort zone. We have to move out of our thinking, wrong thinking. We have to move out of our negative thoughts. We have to move out of our condemning spirit to condemn others. What we need to do? We should have the fear of God in our mind. That's why we are not able to bring souls, are not able to preach gospel to lost souls, because one is lack of burden, and second is lack of fear. That we work hard to win, God knows our heart. That they are pure in this matter. I hope that deep within you really know it too. See the statement of Paul telling here the fear of God in his mind. Always, he, they work so hard to bring soul, to win so others to Christ. And then what they say? God knows our heart. They are pure in this. In other words, what he was telling, he was not trying to build a church. He was not trying to build a community. He was not trying to build anything. His heart was pure by preaching the gospel, bringing soul to Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Church, are you getting it? Bringing souls to Jesus Christ, not to the church, not to the community, not to any denomination. But when you preach gospel, you are bringing the soul to Jesus Christ. Then after that, it is let them decide which community or which church they want to join. Amen? Are you getting it? 
So fear of Lord, the lack of fear of God will not allow us to win the soul. That's why the fear of God should be continuously in our heart and in our mind. Do you have the fear of God? Then what is the evidence that you have the fear of God? Are you with me? Let's go further. Not knowing the value of soul. Do you know that there is a value of soul? Bible says here, What profit is there if you gain the whole world and lose eternal life? You might gain the whole world, but you will lose eternal life, which can be compared with the value of the... Who, what can be compared with the value of the eternal life? Do you know that the life that we have living, that we will have eternal life in Jesus Christ? Do you know that the life that we are living on this earth right this moment after receiving Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior of our life, do you know that we are bound for eternal life? Right? Now think about it. What is eternal life? The life that God is going to give us even if we physically die right this moment. And we have a life. So what happens? There is no fear of death over our life. And let's understand here the value of soul. Bible says, you know, in the, in the book of Luke, he says, when the one soul received Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, heaven rejoice. One soul. I'm talking about one soul. I'm not talking about many souls. I want that everybody who's sitting in this room understand that you are not, under, you, you, you should not think about bringing thousand souls. At least start with one. Start with one. Are you with me? Start with one, because souls are very important in the hand of God. Do you know what? Important? Souls are very important in the hand of God. God loves them. God loves every soul on this earth. When I say every soul means God loves every human being who is alive on this earth. Irrespective of what religion they follow, God still loves them. Are you with me? Are you with me? Not realizing our obligation. Do you know that we have obliged to serve the Lord? Let's read what he says here in Romans chapter 14, 15. For I owe a great debt to you and to everyone else, both to civilized people and civilized alike. Yes, to the educated and uneducated like, so that the full fullness extent of my ability, I am ready to come also to you in Rome to preach the God's good news. Do you know that we have an obligation? Do you know that? Brothers and sisters, I'm asking a question. Do you know that we have an obligation? Yes. Do you know that we have an obligation? We cannot run from our obligation. Now let me put it this way. You are going to work. You have an employment visa. You have an employment contract. You have obligation to go to work or not? Yes. If you don't go to work, what will happen? <coughs> What will happen? If you don't go to work, even after you have a contract, you have a visa, you have everything, and if you don't go to work to fulfill your obligation, either you will be terminated, either boss will say, I cannot pay you salary, right? Same thing happens with our life, that once we have received Jesus Christ, and we, our life is dead to God, and we have to understand that we have an obligation to fulfill it. The moment you start to fulfill your obligation and the moment you start to understand that you have an obligation towards God, not towards this church, not towards this community, but towards God you have an obligation. What will happen? That obligation will lead you to do exactly what God is asking us to do. Church, are you with me? Are you learning? 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 Okay, let's go further. Not willing to pay the price. There is always a price to be paid. Let's read what he says here in 1 Corinthians chapter 10 verse 33. That is the plan I follow too. I try to please everyone, everything I do. Not doing what I like to like or what is best for me. But what is the best for them? So they may be are you understanding this word? What Paul is writing? Paul says, 
I am ready to pay the price if one soul will come to the knowledge of God. He says, not my plan, not my ways, not my understanding I will impose upon them, not my ways, I will, not my authority I will impose upon them. He says here something very beautifully, that is the plan I follow too. I try to please everyone in everything I do, not doing what I like. Not doing what I like. Or what is the best for me? But what is the best for them? So that they may be? Are we doing this? When we see somebody who is not right, when he's doing wrong, when we are doing something happens in their life, they are, the lifestyle is not right straight, and they are, what happened? We don't take a burden or we don't take a step further than that. What we say, oh, this person is already bad. You label them bad. You tell them they are bad. And you are keeping away, away from them. You are keeping them away from you. Because you already decided in your heart, you already decided in your mind, you already decided that their ways are wrong, their life is wrong, they are not doing what is good, they are not doing anything that happens. Yes, they are doing wrong. Why? Because they are still under the influence of the spirit of this world. If they are really receive Jesus Christ, they will be not doing what they are doing. And remember one thing, once upon a time we were also like this, doing wrong in our life. Anybody sitting in this house is directly when he was born, he was a savior. Did he receive Jesus Christ the moment you were born in this world? Church, I'm asking a question. Anybody in this room, can you say, tell me that you were born? Even your born in a Christian family does not give you guarantee that you are saved. Are you with me? Are you with me? Even you are working from the young age into the Christian life and your father and father, mother, everybody is a pastor and everybody is working. It does not give you guarantee that you are saved. That's what Paul was telling us very clearly. He's telling us, we are not willing to pay that price. We always put ourselves, we always compare ourselves and we always want to compare others with us and what happened? We are rejecting people. Are you with me? That's what the problem is that we are not ready to, willing to pay the price. I'll tell you one thing, brothers and sisters. Value people more than your money. I will use this word. Value your relationship that we have with one another more than the money. Money should be a secondary word. Time not should be a primary. We know people have difficulties. We know many have problems. We know many things are happening. But value your relationship more than anything of this material thing in this world. Are you with me? Church, are you with me? Amen. If you're a real Christian, you will do that. If not, it will hurt you. Are you with me? Why do people get hurt when they see people are doing wrong? Why do people get hurt when you see that other people are doing wrong and then you say, oh, these people are not right? Actually, that is telling what is in your life. If your life is clean and washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are free from your life contaminated, everything you have removed from the life. You know what will you see? You will see Jesus always in other people. If Jesus is in you, you will see Jesus in other people. But there is wrong sin in you and there is a hidden sin in you, it will reflect outside with others. Are you with me? Are you getting the point? Right? When Jesus was walking on this earth, when he was doing the ministry, do you think that he was telling people? He was he knew that the whole world around him, the whole people around him were bad people because they had no idea about the kingdom of God. But did he condemn any single soul on this life? Did he he said anybody single soul that he said he condemned them, he said you will go to hell? He always offered them a way to heaven. Are you with me? Why? Because Jesus Christ was full of the Holy Spirit. There was no sin in Him. That's why He cannot see sin in other people's life. He can only see that the sin that He is going to take away from the other people's life, He sees that there is a kingdom of God in other people's life. That's why He was very effective in His ministry, bringing thousands and millions of souls to the Heavenly Father. Are you with me? Are you getting it? Church, are you getting it? Church, are you getting it? Yes. That's why, are you ready to pay the price? This price is very expensive. Salvation we receive free, but to continue in salvation is one of the most 
heaviest price that you need to pay. That's why Paul was writing here. That is the plan I follow. Two, I try to please everyone in everything I do. do not doing what I like or what is best for me. But what is best for? Are you looking your best up in other people's life? Are you looking your best? You know, I always look the best in the sinner's life. I always start to look that which is the good area I can start working with them. I can start with them. Are you know that? Because if I'm going to see sinner as a sinner, you will and I will not have been sitting in this church and we will not be having a fellowship anymore. Because everybody has a flaw in their life. Everybody has a weakness in their life. Are you with me? But we need to give a chance, we need to understand how we can bring them to Christ, how can we develop them into Christ, and we need to have to pay a heavy price for that. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Are you getting it? Church. We continue? Yes. <laughs> reason for winning the soul. Now we rest. Reason for not winning the soul. But now we let's read. Reason for winning the soul. You know, what is the reason that we need to win souls? It is Father's will. It is God's will. Read everybody. This is the good and pleasing God the Savior. For He longs for all to be saved and to understand this truth. See, this is good and pleases God. This is God, our Savior, for He longs for all. He never said He longs only for few people to be saved. He longs for all humanity. You know why Jesus is coming delayed? Because He wants the whole humanity, the whole human race to come to the knowledge of the truth. And He says here, to be saved and understand this truth. What is the truth? Jesus is the truth. Salvation is not in any other religion. Salvation only you will find in Jesus Christ. Are you with me again? You will never find salvation doing good. You will never find salvation in any other religion in the world. You will only find salvation, the true salvation that God offers. It is through Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Amen. Amen. It is the will of Father. Second. It is also not the will, but it is also a command. In Jesus Christ was not requesting you, please go and bear the food. He was not requesting you. He was giving a command. You know what is the command? When you are working in your office and your boss command you, today there will be holiday, you need not to come to the office. What you will do? You will obey his command. You will not go to the office. You will say, oh, happy. I'm not have work today, right? It's a command. He's not requesting you not to come. He's commanding you. Same way Jesus is, when He's our Lord and Savior, we need to obey His command. Are you following Christ? Do we all follow Christ? Do we all follow Christ? Are you following some other religion also in your life that you think that you can make it to heaven? There is no other religion in the world can you bring you to the heaven. I have gone, I have requested, I have been to the Muslim, I have been to the Hindus, I have been to the Buddhist, I have been to the many other Indian religions. Nobody can tell me that there is a way that God has made for us to go to heaven. It's only to the Bible we come to understanding. Again, Christian is not a religion. Church, Christianity is not a religion. Again, Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is the truth. What it is, is the truth. Truth means you and I belong to only one God. And because of the sin that happened, our relationship was broken from God. And Jesus Christ comes and restores the relationship between you and us. Between you and God. Are you with me? So Christianity is not religion. Christianity is that you have now right understanding, now you have a faith in Christ, now you believe that Jesus is only the way, the truth that saves us, and you only believe that there is a salvation is only in Jesus Christ. And that's the truth. You don't need to have a Christian name to go to heaven. Are you with me? You're thinking that I have a Christian name, I come from a Christian country, my name is Thomas Paul, Mark and all these things, that will not take you to the heaven. 
It's only having faith in Jesus Christ will bring you to the heaven. Amen? Amen. Let's go. It's also a command. Therefore, he says, Matthew, this is the last word when Jesus was living his journey from earth to heaven. And he was telling his disciples, he says, Therefore, read everybody. By the way, today we have a baptism at 3 o'clock. Anybody who wants to go for baptism, contact Eric and Romil, right? Eric and Romil, they will bring you and baptize you. Now why he here he say, you know, therefore go. He never gave a request. Oh church, after you receive, please go. Please go. Did Jesus Christ say, please go? He gave therefore. Therefore is a command. How many people obey the command of God? Are you with me? Church, are you with me? Not only that he has commanded you, his father's will, not only he commanded you, but he also has given power to us. How many people have the power of the Holy Spirit in their life? How many people? Church, how many people have the power of the Holy Spirit in your life? Can I see the hands world up? Only five, six, seven, eight people, okay? Next week maybe we will do the power of the Holy Spirit here in the church. Amen? He says here, I want you to read. Read. See, what he says, when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, you will receive the power to testify. Now, the problem is here, people know Father's will, people know the command of God, but they never understood that, not only that, but it also, there is something that God has done, that he has told us, he will give us the empowerment of the Holy Spirit. How many people are empowered by the Holy Spirit every day in their life? When you are empowered by the Holy Spirit, you know what will happen? The evidence that you are empowered with the Holy Spirit, you will not go to sit in the house and make rabba 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 in the house, but you will go out and you will testify about God. Amen. If you are not testifying about God, then I don't know what kind of Holy Spirit you are in praying and who is empowering you. Because the work of the Holy Spirit is very clear. He says to receive the power to testify about me. When he says me, it's about Jesus. Because in concluding he says, about my death and resurrection. How many people know when Dr. George came here to our church? Amen. Right? He said when he received Jesus Christ, within five minutes he went out and started to preach gospel to other people. He never waited to go to the TM school. He never waited to go to the any Bible school. He never opened the Bibles to study much. Yes, he's come from the Christian family. But what happened? The power of the Holy Spirit will not keep you quiet in your life. Are you with me? That's the evidence. Holy Spirit will not keep you, you will not keep quiet in your life. When you are empowered in the house, when you are finished with the work, even in your workplace, even in whatever you are doing in your 24-7 life, whatever you are doing it, Holy Spirit will always prompt you to be His witness. He will make an opportunity and He will use your body and use your mouth to be a witness of Christ. He will testify. If you are not empowered by the Holy Spirit, brothers and sisters, let me, let me explain to you. The moment you receive Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, you know what happened? The Holy Spirit comes in your life. You are born through the power of the Holy Spirit. Now that Holy Spirit which comes in your life, you need to have a fellowship daily with God. And you need to have a daily relationship with God. And that's what we call empowerment of God. That's why you call we are infilling ourselves with the word in the prayer. You know what you do? You pray in your house. You have a devotion in your house. And then you start to pray in the spirit. When you start to pray in the spirit, what happens? The supernatural things happen in your life. Your mind started to activate. Your mind started to go into something what we call trance. And then the Holy Spirit gives you an ability and Holy Spirit makes an opportunity that you will become a, you will testify to somebody else. If you're not testifying of Jesus Christ through your life to anybody on this earth, then there is a question mark in your life and in my life. Are we really understood that we are really saved or not? Are you with me, church? 
Church, are you getting it? Yes. Are you getting it? Yes. Amen? So, remember, it's the work of Trinity that works in our life to win the soul. Because it's Father's will, it is Jesus' command, and Holy Spirit empowers us. How many people believe in Trinity? Amen. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. How many people? I want to see the hands going up. You have any doubt about the Trinity? You have any other thing that somebody is confused? Meet me after the church and I will explain to you about Trinity. Amen? Because Trinity is only that we can understand and we can accept. It's not through the word of God, but through the power of God. Then only we will understand Trinity. Amen? Now, there are needy souls waiting. Do you know that there are needy souls waiting? Do you know that? Church. There are needy souls, there are needy souls. You know, let's see what he says. In the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 9, that night Paul had a vision. In his dream, he saw a man in Macedonia, Greece, pleading him, come over here and... Do you know that when you are praying, God will give you souls? God will lead you to do what exactly to do? How many people go to the mall? When you have a time, you go for malling, what we call window shopping. How many people go to the mall? Can I see the hands? Everybody goes, right? Right? What you go in the mall, what you do? You look to the windows, you look for the clothes, you look for the shoes, you look for the lipsticks, you look for everything that you have, want to do. You wait, you just are mowing, you know? Somebody says, mall is an attraction to remove your press. Stress. When you are stressed, go to mall, it removes your stress. Do you know that? Many people, I, I heard from many people. Now one thing, when you go to the mall, right? Do you see that there are a lot of people who are working there? Do you see that there are girls and boys who are having small kiosks and they are working there? Did they ever encounter, did you ever talk to them? How is their life? Do you ever went and in the max, that you went to the max and you saw the people who are standing there 12 hours, they have a continuous duty, they stand 12 hours and they do their duty. Did you ever reach to them intentionally? Church, that's why I say you should have a burden, you should have a fear of God. And you should understand that it's the Father wills that God wants everybody. Do you know what happens? I have seen in my life, I have always seen. Whenever and ever I have taken Mama into the any place, anywhere, she does not miss an opportunity to share the love of God to whomever she meets in the mall. She doesn't care which nationality they are, which people they are. And even and then she will call me to pray, and we will pray together to those people. Are we taking that opportunity? There are needy souls. There are people who are getting hurt in their life. They are working day and night in this place. In the call that what we call more. They stand, you know they have a duty to stand 12 hours. Sometimes they stand 12 hours in the whole day. They, they get a little break, they sit down, but they have not allowed to sit down. You know how much pain they may be going in their body? But when you reach them out with the love of God, they are ready to receive Jesus Christ. You know, we are missing so much of opportunity, we are missing so much of time in our daily life. When we go to the mall, we are thinking about ourselves. We don't have burden. Yes, I don't say that you don't think about yourself. Yes, we go to the mall to buy something for ourselves. We understand. At the same time, take a burden to look around this. And this is just a small thing. But here he says, you know what Jesus, uh, Paul was writing? He saw in his dream, a man from Macedonia, Greek, was calling him and telling him, come and help us. Remember, Holy Spirit, He will help you to understand, to reach out the needy soul. I have done in my life so many times. Whenever I'm sitting in the house, when I'm praying in the Spirit, suddenly someone comes in our mind, someone God puts in our mind, I will make sure that I will contact that person. When I contact that person, there is something that happens that only God knows what is best for them. You just become an instrument to reach out there. Are you with me? Are you with me? Are you getting it? I get it. Why? Because that's the way we are as a family of God. Not only that what he called the needy souls are waiting, but also there's a trust is committed to us. Do you know that God has entrusted the work on the earth to evangelize, to bring souls to the Lord Jesus Christ is given, is entrusted to the church? 
When I say church, you and me, do you know that? Brothers and sisters, do you know that? Yes. That God has entrusted His work to us so that we can continue His work till we have our bread or till we see Jesus Christ. Let's, let's read what He says. If I were volunteering my service of my own free will, then the Lord would give me a special reward. But this, that is not the situation. For God has picked me out and given me this kind of trust, this holy trust that I have no choice. Do you have, do you know that you have no choice? Everybody is trying to do ministry voluntarily. You know, when you are doing voluntary means, you know what's voluntary? When I'm free, when I can do it, when I can able to do it, when I can able to say it, that's what we call voluntary. And this, sometimes we say, yes, I believe everybody in the church, when you come to the church, whatever you are doing your service to the church, is because you are voluntary to do it. But here, Paul was not talking about voluntary. He was talking here, and he was giving a more understanding. He says, God has picked me out. It is God who has appointed me, it is God who has saved me, and it is God who has picked me out, not to do voluntary service. But he has put me out and he has given me the trust, that holy trust, that I should have no choice. The moment we all understand that we have been picked by God, we have been appointed by God, as our John 15, 16 says, as we are God has appointed us, we have not chosen God, God has chosen us. And the moment you understand that you are picked by God, you have a very important role to play in the kingdom of God, what will happen? You will not do things voluntarily. You know, people who are doing things voluntary, what do you know? Again, as they have a time, they will do it. If they don't have time, they will not do it. That's the work of the voluntary. So, are you with me? How many people know that you have been paid by God for His kingdom work? You have to understand these things. Do not give your voluntary service. God does not want your voluntary service. You have to understand here that God has picked you out. God has saved you, appointed you. You have no choice, but you need to continue in the kingdom of God. Are you with me? You know, when I was understanding this word very well, when I was a young Christian, I was thinking, why Lord, you are putting me, I am going to church. People around the church, they don't care for the house of the Lord. They don't care for the people. They don't care for anything. They, even they don't care for the pastor who is preaching to them. I was asking this question always, you know, I saw the people's lifestyle. I saw people how they are. You know, they come to the church, they, they come to the church, in the church they are very happy, they are very good, they show, they show the love to each other, the moment they go out of the church, even the whole week they will not contact each other. Are you with me? Yes. That's what we call voluntary service. Are you with me? Right? Remember the story of the lost spoon? A pastor goes to the house of one person, a family, he meets them, he talks to them, then he left that family house, he speaks about, he prayed for them, he left. After three weeks, then the lady started to look for a spoon, there was one special spoon, they were looking for it, and they remember the pastor, when he was came to the house, he was holding that spoon in his hand. So they, what she called, she called the pastor and said, Pastor, can I ask you some favor? He said, yes. You know, Pastor, three weeks back when you came to our house, you had the spoon in your house, maybe you have taken by a mistake with you. And pastor said, no my dear, I kept it in the Bible. Three weeks, the pastor went to the house, he prayed. After three weeks, he called, in other words, they are not opening the Bible to read. And this is the real condition of everybody of us. Let's not be foolish in this area. Right? Church, are you getting it? Are you getting it? The story? Pastor, I kept it in the Bible so that you will know. There's another story that he'd like to know, no? Whatever you are, I will explain to you when it's coming to the next week. So understood, the trust is committed to us. Do you know that you have been trusted by God for His kingdom work? If you don't know till this moment, I want you to know right this moment that God has appointed you. So do not, please do not give me voluntary service. You know what voluntary service? When I, I can, I can. If I cannot, I cannot. You have to understand, you have no choice. You have no choice. You cannot back out, you cannot go out, you have no choice. 
when you understand that you have no choice, you will understand that you have been, now you have no choice, then you have to give your best to the Lord. Amen? Amen. Qualification for winning soul. There is a qualification for winning soul. What is qualification? Following Christ. Many people say, I am a Christian. I am a Christian. When you are a Christian, you should follow Christ. That's when the person who follows Christ is called a Christian. Are you with me? Are you with me? The person who follows Christ, he is called Christian. It's not because you were born in a Christian country. It's not because you were born in a Christian family. What you call a Christian does not make you Christian. The person who follows Christ is a Christian. Now what Bible says? Jesus called out, Come along with me. I will show you how to fish for the souls of men. Are you following Christ? If you follow Christ, He will teach you how to win the soul. Amen? So, make sure the qualification that's required is following Christ. The second qualification should be spiritual wisdom. That's what we are mainly. Godly men are growing tree that bears life-giving fruit and all who win souls are wise. You should have the spiritual wisdom. You know, God calls us, then He qualifies us. Are you getting it? You are not qualified by yourself to go to God. God actually has to call us, then He qualifies us, then He trains us. So whatever education that you have, whatever background that you have, He is immaterial to God. God actually wants your heart. And this is what you have to understand. You need to have a spiritual wisdom. Church, are you with me? Right? Then identify with others. And this is a very important thing, a qualification that requires for us to win the soul. If you don't know to identify ourselves with others, and you don't identify yourself with the situation of others, you will never able to win a soul. Let's read what the Bible says. Read everybody. When I run, run. Again with one voice. I should hear it. Okay from you. Read. When I Are you looking at the picture what Paul is writing here? Paul is telling, when I am with those whose conscience bothers them easily, I don't act as they, though I know it all. No, sometimes we say, as a Christian, I know it all. Because I am going to heaven, I know the way of heaven now. So I know it all, right? But here something he says, do not say they are foolish. Again he says, don't say they are foolish. The result is that they are willing to let me help them. Yes. Whatever this person is like, again read, whatever a person is like, I try to find a common ground with him so that he will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save Are we getting a common ground? You know what Paul was identifying himself? He was telling once upon a time I was a sinner. And I know I was the greatest sinner among all the sinners. And what happened when he looked to another person? He does not, you know, that person's conscience is bothering. The person is a different religion person. Person is having some different mindset. Person is having something. So Paul is telling, I don't tell them they are foolish because normally we tell other people. You know, it's like that. If you don't go with us, please do not come with us. Are you with me? This is the attitude that we have created in a Christian in Christian kingdom. If you don't believe in Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit, you're not a Christian. You don't have to come here. If you don't accept Jesus Christ, the Lord and Savior, you have no entry to come to the church. Church is for the sinners also, right? Amen. Are you getting it? Amen. We create a border. We created a barrier. But what happened? We never identify ourselves with them. When you identify yourself, you know sometimes somebody talk to me about some situation they are going through. I can identify myself with them because I have gone through that situation. I know what's the pain of the situation. You know when, the, when you are betrayed by your family, when you are betrayed by your friends, when you are betrayed and what happens with you, and when you are counseling or when you are talking to some person in that area, you can always tell them, I know that I have gone through it. I know the pain that has happened. But that pain will lead you to somewhere else. What happened? I will create a common ground 
for us to tell them about the love of God. Are we making a common ground? When you meet a Muslim person, what are you going to tell them? Uh, he said, I, he will ask you a question, Jesus is not the Lord, he is a prophet. So at least you have a common ground to say, at least he believes in Jesus. You know what he believes? He believes, the whole Muslim world believes, Jesus is going to come back to save them. At least there is a common ground between us and them. What is the common ground? We are also waiting for Jesus. Second coming, he is waiting for the first coming. So at least we can start from there. We cannot reject them, right? Are you with me? Same thing with the Hindu people. When you meet the Hindu people, they have a common ground. They believe that their good works will save them. Yes, Bible says you have been saved to do the good works. So at least you have a common ground to talk about the good works which will not save them. At least you can bring them to Jesus Christ. But what is the problem is happening? We don't even understand. We don't even identify ourselves with others. Sometimes we are so proudful people. We think that we know it all and we reject people. Are you with me? Brothers and sisters, let me be very frank. Your job is to tell about Jesus. It is Jesus' work to save them. Bible says, He will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save It's not your job to save people. And you have no authority, you have no power on the earth to save anybody. Do you know that? It is only Jesus who has says here about Christ and let Christ save him. You just identify yourself that you are once upon a time a senior sinner. Identify yourself with those sinners, how they are going through. And now you have enlightened by the Christ. Somebody spoke about Christ to you. The mind was enlightened. You received Jesus Christ. You are so happy. So identify yourself with others so that you will be easily able to be qualified to win people in Christ. Church, are you with me? Church, are you getting it? Yes. Man, let's go further. Doesn't want to go further. Not seeking your own. Again, we come back to the same verse. Do not seek your own gain. Do not seek your own ways, brothers and sisters. Are you with me? That's the qualification that's required. Watching over your own soul. You have to watch over your own soul. Let's read what he says. Keep a close watch on all you do and think. Stay true to what is right. God will bless you, use you to help. This is what is very important in the qualification to watch your own life. I might be preaching about Jesus Christ here. Out of this door when I go, I do not believe in Jesus Christ. Are you with me? Are you getting it? Because if our action does not match our word, then you are disqualified to be a Christian. Church, are you with me? Keep watch on your soul. Try to see, are you really living right with God? Are you really? Don't worry about your past life. Your past life is gone. Nobody has a right to talk about your past life. And you yourself should not worry about your past life. Are you with me? You need to understand that are you allowing God to help you to transform your life? Are you allowing God to change your life? Are you with me? Are you allowing God to, that you are completely getting transformation day by day in your life? Are you allowing other people to understand that? Sorry, are you allowing yourself to understand that you are not great, but only the one who is great is in you, is God, Jesus Christ himself? Are you with me? That's why it's very important to watch over yourself. Today, the world Christians has given a very negative effect on the world. Today, people don't want to come to Jesus Christ. It's because when they see the life of the Christian people, they say, wow, this person goes to church and outside the church, he comes, he drinks, he has women, he is doing gambling, he is doing with some, staying with somebody else's life, he is, he is having a lot of problems in their life. When they see these things in your life, what happens? They want to keep away from you. You will not be a good testimony to them. Church, are you with me? Are you getting church? Yes. Are you getting it? Yes. You know, when I started my life, I'll tell you the truth. I used to hate anybody on the earth. It's only the Christian people. Because for me, that time, as an only Roman Catholic, I saw those people, they go to the mass, 
they go to the church, but after the service, they come back, they have a party in the house. Drinks are solving, people are eating, enjoying it, and then they have a girlfriend, they have a, uh, somebody's wife to sleep with them. You know, all these things I have seen in my life. And the hate that I had against the Christian people was very bad. That's why whenever I see any Christian people, I never like them. Because that was the image they set in front of me. But when I understand the reality of the Christianity, when I understand what is the meaning of Christianity, it changed my perspective. And what happened after that, I started to watch on my soul that any bitter not rules in my life. Brothers and sisters, the greatest person, people, you know, and let me be very frank on this here. Let us not live a call a split life. You know, there is a call a split life in a spiritual life. In church, I'm a very pious. In church, I'm a very holy person. In church, there is nobody better than the sweet talker than me. In church, ah, I love so much. I love everybody, showing people, showing off so much. But the moment you go in your house, you will come to know who you are. And what happened, your children is looking to your life. When they see that Papa and Mama are telling lies, then see that Papa and Mama has no fear of God. When they see Papa and Mama are not actually living according to what they are in the church, children will pick that habit in them. Because they look to you and they walk in your life. Are you with me? Are you getting it? Church, are you understanding what I'm speaking about it? That's why it's very important to watch over your soul. If you, if you are not being regarded in your family as a Christian, you cannot be regarded as a Christian in the society. Church, this is a very strong statement, right? Because Christianity starts in our family. When they see that you are a Christian, when they see that your life is changed, when they see that there is a transformation in your life, when they see that you are not doing what you are doing in the past, when they see that you are opposing every wrong happening in the family, when you see that when you are taking a stand in the family not to do anything wrong, what will happen? Family people will say, wow, this guy, the person, what he was before is changed, now he's something different. So what happened? When they see our lifestyle that we are living with Jesus Christ, we pray, we read the word of God, we ask them to come in prayer, we ask them to join in prayer. If don't come, still we pray, we don't mind about it. When they see this lifestyle within us, what will happen? Something will happen in their life. Are you with me? Are you with me? Church. Are you getting it? Even in your workplace, your workplace, you have to go to work. Do right what is right. Do not do right when your boss is there, right? Do not try to please your boss. Remember, he is your boss, he knows everything. Sometimes you say, oh, my boss does not know anything, he's an idiot. If he's an idiot, he will not be your boss. Okay. Are you with me? Are you getting it? That's why, brothers and sisters, as a Christian, let me explain to you, the qualification for you to win the soul is to make sure that the life after you receive Jesus Christ should match the word of God. If there is no matching in the word of God, then you cannot be a good person or good example to others that is surrounded by your place. You know, I will not boast about it. But this is what we do. Wherever we go, wherever. When we are staying in another building, there was a Roman Catholic girl, the neighbors to us. And every time we meet, there was a son, we used to talk to them. And to the son, we are able to meet the family. And because... Most of the time we are outside the building, so mommy is always in the house. So she goes and she met them, and she asking, and she started to tell about Jesus Christ to this lady, and go, she was a woman, Kathy, she accepted. And she asked mommy, what, mommy asked, what do you want God to do? She said, I want to be pregnant again, I want her child, a girl. So mommy said, God will give you, let's pray. And we prayed, and what happened? She was pregnant, she received a child, a girl. Now when she received the girl, and she has an opposite neighbor, she's a Muslim. And they are talking to each other because they are from Kerala, so they talk to each other. And this Muslim lady one day knocks on the door, she says, Mommy is at home. I said, Yes, she comes in the head. Please pray for me also, get a girl. <laughs> are you with me? Are you with me? Are we are a salt and light? Are we are living an example like that? Is our speech are so good that we are helping other people to know Christ? Is our life, is a life through our lifestyle that we are speaking about Christ to others? Are you with me? That's the qualification, brothers, requires for winning the soul. 
It's not only having a head knowledge of what the word of God. It's not about having a head knowledge of Genesis 126, Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, John 4.16, 14, 14.16. It's not about those things. It also speaks about your life. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Because when your life is good among other people, when they see a difference in your own life, people will be attracted to your God. Are you with me? That's why it's very important to have others. They say, says, keep a close watch on you, do and think. Say, stay true. What is? Stay true. What is? And God will bless you. And use you to help. Right? As a, it was a very difficult time when I started to start my journey with God. You know, I have a lot of opposition in my family. There are a lot of riches, they were doing it. And I have to always stay true what is right. Today, they know very well that I don't take part in the idol worship. I'm talking about my relatives. They, are, they know very well that what I'm doing. So there is no more question they will ask me about it. Are you with me? So that you can help others. Speak about God's love. For God loved the world so much that He gave His only Son. So that anyone who believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. Guidelines for winning the soul. Now there is important guidelines that you have to understand in winning the soul. What you have to speak? You have to speak the love of God. Whenever you meet someone, tell them Jesus loves you. When they tell them Jesus loves you, tell them this verse. Are you with me? Are you with me? Yes. Guidelines. Make known that all have sinned. This is I have to understand that everybody is a sinner. Yes, all have sinned. All fall the short of God. Glorious idol. This means everybody is sinner. Nobody in the world is righteous. Everybody is sinner. Proclaim the salvation is not by work. Salvation is not the reward of good we have done so that none of us can take any credit of it. Salvation is not by good work. Salvation is only through Jesus Christ. This is just some guidance I added here. Declare that salvation is by Christ only. This is it's very powerful for us to understand. Do you still believe there is any other way to Christ? Any other way for heaven? Anybody in this room, do you believe? Apart from Jesus Christ, do you believe that any other God can take us to heaven? Anybody here? It is only Jesus who will bring us to heaven, right? There is a salvation. There is a salvation is no one else under all heaven. There is no other name for all men to call upon to save them. It is only the name of Jesus Christ. Declare the salvation is by Christ. Even his own land, among his own people, the Jew, he was not accepted. Only few would welcome and receive him. But to all who received him, he gave them the right to become the children of God. And all, all they needed is to do what was to trust him to save them. It's very important. The salvation is in Jesus Christ. Now, secret of winning. There is also secret of winning souls. What is the secret? Life of concern. O oh Israel, my people, O oh Jewish, my brother, how I long for you to come to, my, to Christ. My heart is heavy within me. I, I cry bitterly day and night because of you. Christ knows that the Holy Spirit is no, one, uh, is no more pretense than what I say, that I would be willing to be forever than it would be saved you. Do you have a life of concern in Wellington? Do you have a concern and burden in the same thing? I'll just go further. And important is the life of prayer. A person who prays in a closet will be always empowered to share the love of God. This is a test for everybody of us. What is the evidence that you are praying in your closet? What is the evidence that you are doing your personal devotion in your life? What is the evidence that you are really a prayerful person? The evidence is that when you pray in your closet, you will go out and do what God is telling you to do. This is the evidence, brothers. I don't want to judge you here. Judge by yourself. Are you with me? Amen. Judge by yourself. Amen? Bible says, only ask and I will give you all the nations of the world. He said, ask. Are you asking in prayer, lost souls? Are you asking in prayer, the lost souls? Now, Mama then taught me a prayer. She said, do not ask for gold, do not ask for rich. 
Do not ask for anything. Do not ask for anything else in this world. Ask in prayer is the lost souls. And that's what we are doing. Asking God to give us the lost souls so that we can preach, so that God will save them. Bible says, only ask and I will give you all the nations of the world. All the Bible studies that you are having in your area, please, in your Bible study after you pray, after you conclude your Bible study, start to pray for the lost souls. Ask God to give you lost souls in the city that you are in. And I'm telling you, God will lead you there. Are you with me? God will lead you there. Life of holiness. Right? Did everybody read? Why did God save us? Once upon a time, we were far away from God. And God saved us so that the world will know God is there and He saves people and we should live a life of holiness. The life of unity. Not also holiness, also unity. My prayer for all of them is that they will be one heart, mind, just as you and I are. Father, just as you are in me, I am in you. So they will be in us, the world will believe you sent. It's in other words, unity, life of unity. You know what's the life of unity? I may be united to come to church. I am with you, Pastor. Every week I will come to church. That's not the unity. That's an agreement that you come. Unity is that we both, you and I, as a church, we come together, together in doing the work. Are you with me? Are you with me? That's the unity God is looking for. It. The life of good deeds. Do not hide your light, let it shine for all. Let your good deeds glow from all to see, so that they will praise your heavenly Father. After you have been saved, always do the good deeds. Amen? These are the secret things that you need to understand. Church, are you ready to win souls now? Are you ready to win souls for God? How many people want to win soul? I want you to raise your hand and stand up there. Wherever you are, just raise your hand and stand. How many people want to be part of winning the soul? It should not be convenient. Do not stand because people are standing. I want you that you understand what I'm talking into your heart. Are you with me? Because people are, do not go with the flow. Do you want to be part of winning soul? Right? Let's pray together. Let's raise our hands to the side. Heavenly Father, right this moment we come to your presence, God. We bring our life to you. Thank you, Lord, for choosing us. Thank you, Lord, for appointing us. Thank you, Lord, for saving us. Thank you for making us understand that we are saving, that we are saved from the wrath of God. Thank you, Lord, that we have a purpose now. Right this moment we pray, Father, let there be a burden in our heart. Burden for the lost souls. Lord, we pray, create a burden in our heart. As you had a burden when you saw the city, when you saw the place, when you saw the people around you, you had that burden. You wanted to see and you wanted to reach them. But Lord, we pray, give us the same burden that you had when you were on the earth. So we will also have the same burden when we see the lost souls, when we see the lost souls in our family, when we see the lost souls in our relatives, when we see the, our colleagues that we are living, when we see that they are doing wrong. Lord, we pray, give us the heart so that we will identify ourselves with them. We will not condemn them. We will not talk wrong about them. But praying, Lord Jesus Christ, that we will identify ourselves with them so that they will, we will found a common ground that we will preach the gospel to them. We also pray, Lord, the fear of God to be upon our mind, upon our heart. We pray that there be a fear, the genuine fear of God, so that we may do what is right of God. 
we also pray help us that we may have that we will we will follow you in every area of our life we will follow every command that you have spoken in your word we will follow everything what christ has spoken to us lord and we pray lord give us the spirit of willingness give us the spirit of willingness that we may follow you willingly lord. and we also pray that our service to you will not be voluntary but our service will be to you with a great understanding that we have no choice but we need we are chosen we are appointed to do your work lord. we also pray lord jesus christ continuously help us that we may not deviate from our obligation we know that we have been saved to do good works we have been saved to proclaim the gospel lord we pray use our life to reach out others lord to reach out others lord no matter what is happening we are ready to pay the price of lord we are ready to pay the price lord we are ready to go out of our comfort we are ready to go the way you want us to go lord we are ready to pay the price and finally lord help us that we build our altar in our house lord. an altar where we will come in prayer an altar that we will come in relationship with you an altar that we will bring ourselves to you god and from lord we pray that in that altar when we bring we will ask of the nation and you will give us the nation sir we pray father remove every spirit of blue warmness from us let there be a spirit of fire or let there be a spirit of cold but let not be having the spirit of any blue warmness in us we rebuke the spirit of blue warmness in the life of each and everybody including my life also lord we rebuke it in the mighty name of your son jesus christ and we pray let our life be always on fire to serve you to serve you to serve you and to serve others also Thank you once again father we pray cover everybody with your precious blood and we pray god that you, they will be multiplying it and they will be having the fruit in their life they will bear much fruit lord help them to become more mature in your words oh lord and they will bear much fruit oh lord thank you once again their life will be a blessing in your kingdom oh lord once again father we commit everything into your hand and lord give us the burden from now on was that souls are very important in your kingdom thank you once again we praise with your glory in jesus name we pray amen good morning are we ready to go and proclaim the and uh, go and proclaim the good news to the lost souls and are we the true follower of Christ Amen. and we if you are a true follower of Christ we know about tithes and offering Amen. Oh, for those who came here for the first time and for the, for the benefits of the for those who came for the first time tithes and offering tithes is the 10 percent of our income for example my salary is 1000 the 10 percent is 100 and the offering is uh, it's up to your according to your heart's will to give if you want to give more than the tithes then it's okay god will bless you because uh as uh okay can we already go honor the lord with your wealth with the first fruits of all your house then your bonds will be healed of your clothing, and your bonds will clean over the new wine. Hallelujah, praise God. We have, we should have to honor our God for the first for for the first fruit of our of our wealth. We have, we should have to give the best for our God because He's the owner of everything. The purpose of tithes and tithes and offering. The primary purpose of Titan of is to put God first. We, we should have to give Him the best of, of what we have because He's the owner of everything. We cannot bring, when we die, we cannot bring anything that we have here on earth, right? So we have to give what is the best for our Lord. And what is His promise? Then our, our bonds will be filled with overflowing. Napakasa, napakasa, na, it is so good that uh, our God is so faithful. He never failed us. 
in this pharmacy, see these two this pharmacies. And well, I would like to testify how God really provide in my family, in my job, in our in our life. In 2017, and how He protected us because He said in the Mal in Malachi 3:11 that He will going to protect us. He will going to protect our our fields from the war. So in 2017. Uh, my my children experienced uh, an earthquake. It, it was 6.7 magnitude. It was very strong, and everything in our city there is some um, crap in every in every structure in, in every construction. So praise, I just praise God because for us we're living just in Amipahat. We, there's nothing to be crap, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and in 2018. There's a flash floods going in our in our in our community, and the floods was a race almost on top of the of our top of our roof, and everything was like uh, floating. So when when the furniture are floating, we will know that everything will be like a uh, damage, right? But praise the Lord because uh, after one week, when my my daughters check all the furniture were floating. They're still working. Praise God. So, really God is um, amazing and He's faithful and He's true to His words. And the third one, when uh, 2018 we experienced a death, death, death like it is my, it is our first, it is our first uh, uh, experience that we have our death here in UAA, and it's a for us it less up. It's less than just 10,000 their homes. So for us, it's just like a whole world. Because we never experienced having any, we never experienced, oh, go go and have, uh, what am I? To anyone. So, but uh, praise God because we continue to give our tithes and offering. Amen. Because that was God promised to us, right? That uh, if we have to be faithful in our, in what we have, he will, uh, in a little amount, He will bless us with bigger amount. Amen. In, in, and one of, if you, if you can remember, it was 2017 also that uh, Pastor Babish preached us about the uh, God's economy. And one of one of the principles in in being free for that is to have our tithes and offering. And we, and we embrace those uh, principles in our life. And God blesses us. Amen. Uh, to God be the glory. Let us, uh, I would like to ask everybody to stand and let us pray for our lives and our Father, we thank you for this wonderful morning, oh God. Lifting up our lives and offering, oh God, to you. We, uh, Lord, help us, Lord God, uh, to uh, to renew our mind, oh God, and to embrace the, the, the principle of tithing, Lord God. Because it is your will, it is your will for us, oh God, to be blessed, oh God. Hallelujah, Jesus, Lord. As we pray, Panginoon, uh, oh God, with this tithes and offering, may it use my believer, Lord God, in your kingdom, oh God. And uh, in winning souls, oh God, in Jesus' name, oh God, we thank you. This is our prayer, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Wow. <laughs> Alright, and for those who raise their hands, may I invite you here in front? <laughs> Ushers, can you please help them? <laughs> Any more? Okay, po. I'm going to go to my own. So, let's go. So, let's go. So, I'll be asking you about the topic. Alright, so if you have learned something. So, uh, we just want to know your name and which country you came from. If you're from the Philippines, which part of the Philippines? And then, who are, where are you living here in the UAE? Yeah. And then, who invited you to be here? Okay, po, sino kong gusto mauna? Since you kuya ng taro, ikaw ang Okay. Sige. Hello. Okay. Good. Good afternoon, everyone. And my name is Gary Laguyo from Long North, Cotabato. Wow, Long North. Mindanao. 
Nomor sepeda batu? Filipina. Bisa hak, ilang hak bisa ya. Wah, I invite myself to be here. Let's go around the hotel and ask someone where they can join. Wow! God has led you to be here, right? Because I'm working in this hotel. Good. I ask our. So you you will give us a big discount. Because I asked uh, our HR because she's a Christian also. Yeah. I asked, I asked her and she said uh, every Friday they're, they're having oh. a service here. So I came by myself. Wow. So I came early. You came early. How are you doing here? Yeah? Uh, international City Phase 2. Well, International City Phase 2, it's very far, right? So, you can coordinate with our transport ministry every Friday if you're having a hard time uh, going here. So, you can just coordinate with them so they can pick you up. What's the name of Kuya Darin, who is from South Katabato? Good, good! Uh, sige po, si Ate. <laughs> Roa. Yes, 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 my name is Rodi I'm working in Medus One. Medus. Yes, in Philippines from Northern Samar. Northern Samar. We are from South and we are Northern. All right. And thank you for my sister, my friend, as my sister, Angela. Auntie Angela, wow, praise the Lord. Hi, good afternoon po. Uh, I'm Paula Michelle Valderaman from Bukid Naman. Uh, si Ate May Ann po ang nag-invite sa akin. Actually, wow. kasama ko sa sabit mo. And I work in Canada Cafe and I lived in Interna uh, Internet City and will be transferred to Merdiff soon. Merdiff? Ah, okay. Ah. What's the name of Ate Paula? Paula Michelle Valderaman. Paula? Paula. 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 She, she preferred Paula. <laughs> Hola. Hi everyone, I'm blessed to be here. I'm Mark. And I'm from Mindanao, Bisaya Buko. Wow, yeah. I'm invited by Ate May Ann. And I live here in Alriga. Alriga, okay. May I move to Satanan? Oh, you said that? Good morning everyone. My name is Aubrey. I'm from Bukidnon. I was invited by Ate May, which is my instructor. Before? Before. Wow. I live in... So definitely you were her student, right? Ah, yes. Yes. That's so cute. I live in Alnada, Georgia. Wow, so you just came here by yourself? No. Uh, you were picked up, right? Yes, sir. Ah, very good. Can we give, uh, can we give God a mighty clap of grace for our brothers and sisters and also for the transport ministry for picking them up? We welcome you to Jesus is Alive community. So we are a community of believers. Our commission to share the goodness of the Lord, not just in the Philippines, but also here in the UAE. So we are so blessed to have you here, and the Lord is delighted to have you here today. And we look forward to seeing you every Friday. To God be the glory. You can now be seated. Is it just amazing that our, all Bisaya are coming here in our church? Okay. Um, Continu continually, uh, is there anyone who give a testimony? Okay, thank you. 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 Okay, last, last week, actually, maawa, my company started doing less in the 
salary of the store manager. So um, all of us were a little bit scared because some of them are being forced to resign. So last last week, I was called by my area manager and he told me that I have to go to the union capital because they're going to talk to me. So at first, I was worried because of course I have my family here and maybe I would be terminated. But then I started, um, and then I remember the word of God that war is a sin. So I started to pray, I told God, Lord, whatever is your will, that your will be done. Then I know that your plans are always perfect, so I will um, accept whatever your plan, whatever your plans for me. So then, um, the, the, that morning, I went to the human capital, and she told me that um, there will be a deduction from your allowance. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to wait, how much will it be? And then she told me it will be 150. You know, that month didn't sink to, to my mind immediately. I was, what I was expecting is like, you know, thousands or more. Then I, I prayed, after that she told me, it will be removed 150 from your salary. Then I said to her, from where it will be? Is it going to be from my HRA? Then she told me, no, it will be from your salary allowance. So that only I, I um, you know, I think that I then I thank God because first, I was thinking, like I said, 1,000 dirhams or more, but then they're going to deduct it only 150. Then after that, I also remember that whether good or bad, we have to thank God. Because first, I thought that it was a bad thing because they're going to remove 150 from my salary. But then, good is that, that only time I came to know that still on that, that time, because actually it would be effective only on January. So good is that I came to know that until now, I am receiving 150 of um, salary allowance, wherein other store managers are not receiving anymore. So I praise God because He is so good that He's still providing me this allowance. So I know so that He's so good because, like I said, only 150 will be deducted from my salary. So I praise God and thank and thank God and glory praises and all the love to Him. Anyone? Anyone else? I just want to add up to the testimony of my mother. Actually, um, my mother did deliver the, the Tyson offering. Uh, I was there when the earthquake struck Mindanao. Uh, I, was, I was wounded. A lot of us were, uh, were wounded during that time. And they were totally, total blackout in the area. And then my, 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 my sisters experienced flash flood. And uh, there have been a lot of problems, trials, and it was like a desert in our lives and we uh, experienced a lot of things that normal people would, wouldn't mind undergoing. So I just want to testify the goodness of the Lord because we've been praying for our friends to be, to, to our, uh, we've been praying for our lot to be friends. So three, four, by the, by the grace and the goodness of the Lord, we have already started 3-4 of the fencing of our lot. Can we give God a mighty clap of praise? Uh, uh, my mom has been saving a lot. Almost 100% of her salary has always been given to us for, from the moment we, we were born up until now. So from little by little, we, all, we are helping her to, to, to realize what she wanted to have a good home, I mean, a, a, good, a good lot. So, that's just so amazing, right? I mean, uh, when we desire good things, he, allow, he allows us to experience good things. Because we all deserve the joy, we all deserve the blessings that the, that the Lord has promised us. And He is always faithful. You know what, if you're praying for something else and you have not received it, believe. It, it's on the way, for sure. It's on the way. God is not delaying it, but for sure, He is going to give you in the right time, at the right place, at the right moment of your life. Amen. God is God is uh, testing your your patience and your character. Maybe God won't change the situation for sure, but God will change your character. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. Continually. Yan, uh, our services 
Our services are being conducted all throughout the seven Emirates. So we have seven Emirates in the UAE. So if you have friends from Ras Al Khaimah, Fujairah, Sharjah, Abu Dhabi, Ajman, Omar Queen, feel free to contact them and let our leaders contact them so they can attend our church service. And every Tuesday, we are conducting our midweek service. So for those of you who have friends who don't have Friday off, they are most welcome to join our midweek service. It's being held in uh, Al Kuri Hotel, 8, PM, 8 to 10 p.m. And we have started our GIA International Dubai service. Can we give God a mighty clap of praise? God has been so faithful. We just um, we just started last week, so we'll be holding again. That's every Friday onwards. So if you have international friends, because salvation is not just limited to Filipinos, right? Um, God has broken the race, the nationality, because salvation is for everyone. Uh, uh, Bro Babesh had told us a while ago that it's for everyone. Salvation is for everyone. So if you have friends like uh, Africans, Nigerians, Thai, uh, Lebanese, so they are most welcome to, to attend our uh, community, I mean, international service being held here, the same place after this service. Okay, so but of course they are also welcome in our main service. Uh, for our live uh, worship conference that would be held tomorrow, yes, tomorrow in Crown Plaza Dera, and Kuya Mabel inform us, inform me a while ago if for those who want to join uh, the live worship conference and weren't able to to pay for the T-shirt because the t-shirt would, would serve as the entrance for, for the concert, I mean, for, for the conference. So, the t-shirt would be available at the venue, so you can just buy them, and, and you can buy there, and uh, you can just join the conference. And also for the PPC, it will be on uh, 30th October in Al Kuri Hotel, so we are inviting everyone to join us for the prayer and praise celebration. So this is um, uh, a gathering of all uh, you, I mean, Chia, all, uh, all pro across Dubai and across U UAE. So if you are free, you are most welcome to join us. And of course, for the Bless UAE, fasting and prayer, two seasons hotel in Dubai Internet City, that will be on November 2 to 7, 7 p.m. to 9.30. So everyone is, very, is invited to join us for the fasting and prayer. Amen. For the IPN training, that's every Sunday, that's 8 to 10 p.m. in GIA Dubai Training House. And of course, um, our musical training being conducted every Friday, so for those uh, for those who attended for the first time, if you want to know our musical instruments, you are most welcome. So our uh, CMA director would be very much willing to train you. And of course, for the water baptism, we'll be holding our water baptism 3 p.m. onwards. Uh, there are uh, brethren who enlisted themselves beforehand. So for those who want to undergo water baptism later, you are very most welcome. You, you can just bring your comfortable clothes. Uh, yung damit na nababas na. <laughs> because you, you will be submerged in the water. I mean, of course you cannot be submerged with this with this load. So you can just bring your comfortable clothes to to be submerged in the water. So that will be later. Before we go to the cell groups, uh, no, we cannot just let it pass to have a uh, testimony for the Lord. And those who are uh, being, uh, what do you call this, being prompted to testify, of course, we are freely to give at this time to have a testimony. Uh, may I call on uh, Carla for this Very testimony that is going to glorify the Lord. Thank you. 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 So it's been a while and. Um, Hello, I'm, I'm back. <laughs> so praise the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for, for everyone who continually prayed and followed us up. I just want to really praise the Lord because na, na remind ako dun sa preaching ni Brother Babesh na sabi niya yung mag-ano nga daw, mag-pray ka daw sa loob daw ng closet, ganyan. 
Alam nyo, naniniwala ako, whatever that is happening in the spiritual realm will take place in the physical. So if it's not happening in the spiritual, then it's not gonna happen also in physical. So if we are not sharing the gospel, of course, meron question dun sa atin, spiritually. And I really believe, if we have truly encountered the Lord, and if we have really tasted and seen His goodness, His love, His mercy, His grace, walang makakapigil sa atin eh, to share the gospel to, to, to other people. We will always be intentional in praying, in sharing the love of God to them. And that's what happened to me at work. Alam mo, nakakatuwa. Sabi ko, Lord, saan ba ako magsisimula? Kasi it's been a while na, na isinishare ko yung salita mo. But you know, the people at work are the ones who are coming to me already asking me about Jesus, about who Jesus is. What is it na yung feeling to have Jesus in our life? Why am I always talking about uh, God's goodness and so on and so forth? And God is really good. Like, it's effortless. I don't even have to share to them the three minutes gospel because it's already easy for me to share to them who Jesus is, the way, the truth, and the life. And it's really, it's really overwhelming to be in that situation where God has entrusted you to share His life, His, His love to other people. And remembering the one, one, once before, I was also there, not knowing who Jesus is, and now that I have tasted and seen His goodness, alam niyo parang, it's not, it's not just a burden anymore, but I'm being compelled by God, I'm being uh, encouraged by God, all the more, I'm being inspired to, to do so. And another thing po, I, I really would like to praise the Lord. Alam niyo kasi, sinishare ko kay Brother Bavish, I've been sharing to Brother Bavish that, the HR is already kicking me out of the reception because I've been in the reception for almost five years, six years now. And there are lots of uh, opportunities for me, but I'm not taking it, I'm not accepting it. But you know, God is really good. When I desired for it, when Brother Ravish has uh, encouraged me, I desired for it. I don't know from where I'm going to start, on position you will have after reception, because I still don't know what I wanted to do. The doors have been open for me. You know, the HR actually uh, had me go for, for social media training, for design training, and now I'm officially the designer of our company and also handling the social media accounts of our company. And sooner or later, we don't know, December by December there will be um, yun, parang official uh, promotion. We I don't know what I'm, where God will place me, but I really believe na hindi ito basta-basta because of my own efforts lang but because God is really true to His words na His children are not the tail but always the head. So God is really good. Naniniwala talaga ako if, if we have really experienced talaga yung kabutihan ng Panginoon lahat ng mga yari sa atin will always be inspired by Him by His goodness and wala talaga makakapigil sa atin in doing what this is the Lord and in sharing His gospel. So you praise the Lord for God. All, all, all the glory belongs to God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord for your life, Adinaya. It's good to see you here in front again. And you know, you know what? Uh, when you have the goodness of the Lord, you cannot just contain it. Well, when you want to, to testify, right? So if you have a testimony, so, so do not let your heart be troubled and share it to everyone because you cannot just uh, you cannot just uh, know that someone needs your testimony to be encouraged. Amen. So by the way, our water baptism will be held in uh, Lamia Open Beach later uh, for those who uh, enlisted themselves. And of course, almost every day we are conducting our Bible studies. So we have for Monday, we have in Alwasal, we have Waibab in Riga, we have Sahara, we have Rashidia, and of course we have in Rola and of course 19th Street, Satwa. We also have in Tuesday, that's in Satwa, we have in Rola too. We have in Wednesday, we have Thursday, we have Friday, and of course we also have during Saturday. And for those of you, especially for those who came for the first time, uh, we are... Uh, inviting you to join our Bible studies, especially nearest to you. But if you want to open a Bible study in your flat, in your house, in your home, 
you are we uh, we are most delighted to open a Bible study in you. You can just coordinate with our church leaders and pastors. Amen. And of course, our ministries. We have a lot of ministries. We have uh, kids ministry. We have YVA. <coughs> And of course, uh, the Bible service is being conducted now in our training house. That's 1 p.m. That's 1 p.m. to 3 uh, every Friday. We also have our men's ministry. And by the way, men's ministry is handling uh, the international um, service now. So let's always back them up in prayer. Let's always remember them in our prayer points. And of course, our women's ministry, our CMA and media ministry, uh, just for the information everyone that uh, every service is being recorded and being uploaded uh, in our YouTube channel you can just uh, search for GN Dubai ministry and we just want to request uh, the media ministry if you think that you belong in the media so we, we are inviting you to remain after this service we'll just a short uh, we'll just have a short meeting and of course if if you are very smiling and you want to encourage everyone who comes in this door, in this uh, in this sanctuary, you can belong to Asher Ministry and of course our logistics ministry and our transport ministry and others. So, uh, praise the Lord. Can you give just a mighty clap of praise for the Lord? Amen. So as we are distributing our prayer points, can you just uh, grab one partner and get and pray? Four? For a while also? Yeah. Yeah. Let's continue to praise the Lord. Amen. Are you blessed? Yes. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Can we close our eyes Paul, for our closing prayer? Father God in heaven, we thank you, O oh Lord, for today, O oh God. Thank you for your mighty hands, O oh God. Once more, O oh God, you open our eyes, our mind, O oh Lord, our heart, O oh God. Father, we declare, O oh Lord, that Lord, you will be the one, O oh God, to strengthen us, O oh God. Lord, we thank you for the word that you have given unto us today, O oh God. Thank you, O oh Lord, for the life of Brad, or Pastor Babesh, O oh God, that once again, O oh Lord, you open Uh, go for our uh, different places, oh Lord. 